The Henge Builders likes doing things on a grand scale, but nothing can prepare you for Avebury's size. It's massive. But what was it for? It's irritating to be excluded by the passing of time from knowing the purpose of something once so significant. We need a best endeavour theory to plug the gap. And in fact, when we consider certain details, a compelling theory emerges. Avebury scale hints at great importance. The landscape complex boasts both the largest of the stone circles and the largest man-made mound in Europe, Silbury Hill. There was nothing like it till you got to Egypt. The Henge itself has a ditch around it that was originally a whopping nine metres deep and is surrounded by a great bank of chalk that originally gleamed white in the sun and moon shine. The circuit of the Henge is a mile in circumference and within it the outer circle of stones originally numbered around 100. And some of these stones are truly colossal, up to, a, up to 65 tonnes in weight. It's been estimated that it must have taken around 1.5 million man-hours to construct the bank and ditch of the Henge and to transport the sarsen stones. And Silbury Hill would have required a great deal more man-hours even than that, perhaps as much as 18 million. Projects on this scale require a great, a great deal of planning, organisation and coordination, even just to keep your workforce fed, accommodated and equipped. Did the ancient Britons suddenly acquire these project management skills out of nowhere? Or was their involvement from another culture that already had them? But there's more than the Henge and the Hill. We shouldn't forget that another absolutely key feature of the complex is the, the avenues. There were at least two great serpentine avenues flanked by stones leading into the Henge, now known as the West Kennet and Beckhampton avenues. The West Kennet Avenue still stands along the northern third of the route and can still be walked. This avenue ran for about 1.6 miles, was around 15 metres wide and had around 200 stones arranged in pairs. It started at the relatively small double stone circle on Overton Hill, now known as the Sanctuary, and led into the southern entrance of the Henge, which was flanked by two great entrances. The other avenue was once similar, but not much still stands. It started at an open box shape of four stones known as the Beckhampton Cove, two of which survive, and then it too snaked its way to another of the four henge entrances. There can be little doubt that these avenues were processional routes that were utilised in some kind of ritualised ceremony and that the processions made their way into the Henge where the culmination of the ceremony presumably took place and involved internal features such as the two smaller uh, stone circles within. So if I was to say to you that there are compelling reasons to believe the Avebury Landscape Complex was built to provide the setting for a great festival that took place during a public holiday in which farm workers came in great crowds to witness magnificent processions that led along the great stone avenues into the stone circle, and that the purpose of this festival was to revivify the gods and thus bring fertility to the fields, you might think that I was basing this on generalised observations of the structure of the complex, together with old assumptions about what sort of things were important to these farming communities, plus the archaeological evidence for henges being places of feasting. The National Trust Avebury Guidebook, for example, notes that many people think the stone circles were connected with holding celebrations associated with the cycle of the year. However, if I was then to say that the line of reasoning in question also suggests that the site functioned as an oracle centre and was in fact one of several such oracle centres established as part of a grand international project masterminded by the surveyor priests of pre-dynastic Egyptian Thebes and that this plan was based on significant lines of latitude, you might want to see some qualification. First, a look at the central importance of a processional avenue of Thebes and its role in the city's primary festival. And then we'll have a look at the latitudes and the Theban project as described in, in Greek sources. <laughs> 